Hi, everybody. So I decided to do this last minute live chat about Delphi because today was a big day in a court filing. The defense for Richard Allen finally submitted a request for an early or speedy trial, which is supposed to happen within 70 days. And um, based on Google, when I asked what is 70 days from today, it said May 15th. So before we start, as always, this should be this should be about Abby and Libby and as you can see in my scroll at the bottom, I'm asking everybody to be polite, stay on topic, or the moderators will ban you. Um, if you have any, if you hear any background noise, it's raining, so it's on my roof. So hopefully it stops soon. Uh, chat overview. I put on slow mode, so it's 15 seconds between messages to cut down on any kind of spam. Um, there are all types of opinions welcome in my chats. Just please be polite. Don't hate other people who have different theories. Moderators will ban anyone in the chat who is being rude to anyone or commenting negatively about people instead of the case. We're here to talk about the Delphi case, not Delphi drama. People in the chat can click the name of an annoying person and block their messages. If you want to reply to somebody else's um, comment directly so that they will see it, it'll show up your name in orange so they can see that you're replying to them. Uh, so you would type the at symbol and then just the first few letters of their name, you could select their name, um, but your message will be public, not private. If I don't highlight your comment, it does not mean I disagree with you or dislike you. I'm, everybody knows I fall like an hour behind on comments because I ramble. <laughs> chat with others because I'm busy rambling. In the top of the chat box, it defaults to show top chat, but you can change to live chat to see all the comments, although you might not want to see all the comments. I try not to curse, but I can't promise anything. I do not highlight comments with curses in them, so check yourself before you click send. Today's agenda, uh, as I just said before, the defense requested for an early trial in 70 days around mid-May. I don't know exactly what's supposed to happen next if Gull, Judge Gull, is going to be able to even deny this or the prosecution can have a say in this and i know we have some lawyers in the chat sometimes anybody have any clarification on what the next steps would be so part of me doing these live chats is see people say they don't follow what happens every day so i try and keep track of the court filings and i don't want to say provide a service but try and be helpful to people who don't follow the case so i try to do summaries so i will review about 20 slides um that have court filings since my last live chat on February 19th. We may also talk about how did Rick not see the four girls and bridge guy between noon and 1.30. For those of you who subscribe to my channel, you know I did a video and I think 16,000 people watched it and no offense to anybody, but nobody's really given a totally logical expl explanation how these girls went from Freedom Bridge around maybe 12.30 to High Bridge passed all six benches and never saw Rick. We can argue about that later. Next, the next major hearing is March 18th, a contempt hearing where I guess they're going to argue whether Baldwin or Rosie, I don't even want to, I don't know what to say, like if they were bad lawyers or whatever. And McClelland, so there's, um, it said that between, I guess, 9 and 2 p.m. on the 18th, there's going to be two different hearings. One is a contempt hearing. And one is these four new charges against Rick, where I guess he's going to have to say and submit his plea, which I'm assuming is going to be not guilty, obviously. Um, finally, I just, I try to keep myself, I don't want to say honest, but if I discover something that I said previously, I try and correct it. And so it says here, CVS parking lot and the 1.27 p.m. Who's your Harvest Star video? Hopefully, I'll remember to come back to this agenda later. Uh, and just show you real quick some pictures that I'm talking about there to clarify a previous statement I made. Um, I guess I'm going to just go through these slides, as always. Use the chat to talk to other people politely, and I'll get to your comments later. But um, some people say they prefer, or uh, what are they doing? <laughs> they appreciate my summaries for people who don't follow. So here we go. Fe February 19th, amended precipi. Hopefully I spelled that, I pronounced that right. For transcript, filed by the defense, request for transcript from the June 15th hearing. So a few days later, February 22nd, the court reporter replied that that June 15th hearing transcript was mailed to Rosie on October 2nd 
and she will send another copy. Also on the 19th, accused response to state's motion to compel discovery filed by the defense. As always, these are my summaries. I never like, I'm just trying to cut down on words and give an overall review of what it was about instead of, cause some of these are like 10 pages or more and I'm just trying to summarize. I'm not trying to promote any kind of angle. January 18th, Baldwin and Rosie were reinstated. On January 30th, Baldwin and Rosie received the discovery again. Between January 29th and 31st, Baldwin and Rosie received six separate e-discovery emails with volumes of audio, video, reports, transcripts, and other documents, and included evidence the defense believes it never viewed or had a chance to view. The state and defense are in communication regarding evidence that may exist but has not yet been found by the defense. Baldwin and Rosie are working late to review at least 20 hard drives and six e-discovery emails and find evidence that the defense believes exists it cannot locate in the discovery provided. Not sure what that means, but okay. This is continued. The defense seeks an extension to March 25th to turn over their discovery that they've found. And for people who don't know, discovery is essentially the same thing as just evidence. February 14th, Val uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> I thought that in my mind. I was like, no, don't say it. And then I said it. Baldwin and Rosie provided the state with the names of expert witnesses and other witnesses the defense plans on calling at trial. The state requested notice of any exhibits the defense intends to use in depositions before the trial. So when they interview people who might be um, test, uh, witnesses at the trial. The defense does not believe this is legally sustainable, sustainable as no local or trial rule mandates that either side is required to turn over exhibits before depositions. So this is not the actual trial. This is just the deposition, deposition before the trial. Providing the deponent an opportunity to review exhibits takes away the spontaneous responses that often reveal dishonest answers that are later useful at trial. The defense objects to a preview of any exhibits at deposition as violative of trial strategy for both sides. Next order was on, or filing was February 21st, decision on two defense orders by Judge Gull. She denied both of them. Uh, defense's motion for summary denial of the state's verified information for a contemptuous conduct and also defense's petition for clarification regarding the contempt hearing on March 18th. The court has scheduled a hearing on the 18th of March on the state's pleading, uh, which means this, uh, this prosecutor's uh, charges against Baldwin and Rosie, and therefore denies the petition without hearing. Next filing, February 22nd, state's objection to defense's response on discovery filed by prosecution. The summary is the state believes all discovery that the state has, has been provided to Baldwin and Rosie. The information returned by Baldwin and Rosie following the removal in whatever mid-October contained less than what had been provided to Baldwin and Rosie, which required a complete review by the prosecution before it could uh, be given to the temporary attorneys, Libredo and Scremen. Upon reinstatement of Baldwin and Rosie, that same information was returned to the state, reviewed by the state, and then forwarded back to Baldwin and Rosie. That information provided is substantially the same as the original info before they got removed in mid-October. The state shares anything new, including follow-up on tips that come in through the hotline, calls from Rick, and video of Rick in his prison cell. To date, 26 terabytes has been provided to the defense, which, and then this was missing text in this filing, so I don't know what McClellan was uh, trying to say there. I added this for people who don't know, one terabyte equals 250,000 photos taken with a 12 megapixel camera or 250 movies or 500 hours of high definition video or about 6.5 million document pages. So Tom used his calculator and did what is 26 terabytes times 6.5 million pages and it's 169 million pages of evidence. So this trial or the preparation is being sponsored by Red Bull. 
Okay, next, we're actually continuing this. So this is the state's objection, the prosecution's objection to Bald and Rosie and their um, response on handing over the evidence. The defense failed to reciprocate the discovery obligation with the exception of six names provided on February 13th without clarification about their area of expertise or what they will testify to. It seems the defense are acting in bad faith when they at a minimum cannot identify which field of expertise their expert witnesses practice in. The state further believes that exhibits the defense plan to show to witnesses in the depositions should be turned over in advance of the depositions in order to prepare for said depositions. This would assist in preparation and would save time by taking breaks to examine the exhibits. Um, these uh, depositions, I think, happened March 1st. So this is already over. Anyway, this also seems in compliance with the, com the compromise by the state to allow the defense to take multiple depositions of the same witnesses. The state attempted to resolve this with the defense without court intervention. But like the discovery, the defense refuses to turn over any exhibits. The state wants the defense to turn over any and all discovery in their possession immediately, along with any exhibits that they plan to use in the depositions, not the trial itself. So February 22nd, a list of witnesses and exhibits for the March 18th contempt hearing filed by Baldwin and Rosie. The summary is, it's just like a list of a bunch of attorneys. So criminal defense attorneys, uh, Indiana Bar Association, a personal injury attorney, various. Um, I, I researched all of these names on Google. And so it's like I put their name in, in Indiana and said, uh, who the hell is this? So I couldn't figure out this one person. Joel Winicky is the husband of Kara Winicky, who has filed some motions on behalf of Rick. I guess he also is an attorney who works for the Indiana Public Defender Council. So I'm assuming the defense is saying, well, these people are all going to say that we were not in contempt. Next filing, February 22nd, the state's response to defendant's motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence. As you guys know, if you've ever watched my stupid live chats before, and if you don't know, because there are some people who join who are outside of the U.S. and don't speak English. So exculpatory evidence means it excuses the defendant. So it's good for Rick if it's exculpatory. Inculpatory is bad. It means he's going to be in jail for a long time or in prison. So this is filed by the prosecution. My summary, this is a few um, slides because it gets into quite a bit of detail. So the evidence in question is not exculpatory nor potentially useful. So this is uh, Nick McClelland wrote this. The interviews of the two ODNIS who have the initials PW and BH, who the defense has written in various court filings that these two guys are responsible for the murders. And because Rick did not know these two guys, that means he's not involved in the murders. That's what they said in a previous court filing, the defense. So the interviews of PW and BH are not evidence at all related to this case. They are interviews the defense wished to use to support a wild theory that has no evidentiary support. They were not destroyed purposefully. The state asked the court to deny the motion and states the following. On, Oct uh, sorry, on August 10th, 2017, so however, a few months after the murders, like whatever, what's eight minus two is six. <laughs> oh, sorry. So six months after the murders, the Carroll County Prosecutor's Office investigator, who has the last name Mullen, discovered the DVR, which I think is digital video recorder, at the Delphi police interview room had been recording continuously for an unknown number of days, and the data storage on the six terabyte drive had been consumed, causing the equipment to record over previous recordings. Mullen called the company who installed the DVR immediately, but all recordings prior to February 20th, 2017 were lost. So when I saw this, I remembered like a previous thing because August 10th goes against McClellan stating in a previous filing that September 20th was when the um, it was discovered that, so I guess it was in a defense document that Baldwin and Rosie said, they were told by McClellan that they discovered on September 20th, 2017, 
Um, so there's some kind of like discrepancy there. And I just added this one other part. So this says it's six, the drive holding onto the videos of interviews and stuff was six terabytes big. So if one terabyte in my whatever Googling showed a terabyte equals 500 hours. So does that drive contain up to 3000 hours of video? But they did not lose 3000 hours of videos because the drive was obviously not full when the error began, whether it was somebody not pushing a button on the wall or a button on the recorder or whatever. It was not exactly stated how this um, continuous recording uh, error happened. So I was like, why is this only after, I'm sorry, only before February 20th, 2017 were lost if they did not discover it until like six months later? And the only thing I could think of was, were the recordings after February 20th done at other locations or a command center that was set up? I think it was around February 20th or maybe a few days later that um, they maybe created a command center at Carroll County Sheriff's Office or something. Does anybody know? Number two, February 17th. I'll get to your answer in like 45 minutes. Uh, number two, February 17th, 2017. So this is four days after the murders. BH was interviewed at the Delphi Police Department, but it was recorded over. The narrative summary prepared by investigators from that interview has been provided to the defense, which kind of makes me wonder, like, how was that summary even prepared? I don't know. Maybe they looked at the entire video on a system, but they did not save it to a separate file. I don't know how that works. Number three, February 19th, 2017, PW was interviewed at home and a narrative report has been provided to the defense. The report does not indicate that the interview was recorded and no recording has been located. The interviews of BH and PW are neither exculpatory nor are they potentially useful evidence for Rick or I guess even the prosecution that the state did not destroy any recordings maliciously or in bad faith. Five, the due process clause does not impose on the state an undifferentiated and absolute duty to retain and preserve all material that might be of conceivable evidentiary significance in a particular prosecution. Six, the state has only a constitutional duty to preserve material, materially exculpatory evidence and evidence that is potentially useful to the defense. Seven, the mere possibility that a defense may have been created in the future by a piece of destroyed evidence does not mean that there was apparent exculpatory value at the time police acquired the item. The fact that evidence had an outsized significance for the defense is not enough to show a deprivation of the defendant's due process rights. Number eight, the defense is merely speculating that the interviews that were recorded over will aid the defense. Mere speculation is not enough. Nine, the loss of the recordings does not justify application of the two-part test to see if the loss warrants dismissal. So number 10 here, I summarized, like there are 11 different bullets, I think like A through K or something, or L or something. So I tried to summarize it in as few words as possible. So 10 says the two-part test consists of determining what kind of evidence is at issue and then determining if the evidence was destroyed in bad faith. So some of these items to determine this are determine what evidence is at issue and if it material, sorry, and if it is materially exculpatory or potentially useful to the defense. Materially exculpatory equals or means if it possesses an exculpatory value that was apparent before the evidence was destroyed and the defendant would be unable to obtain comparable evidence by other reasonably available means. It tends to establish a criminal defendant's innocence, not guilt. The state must preserve exculpatory evidence and the failure to do so deprives a defendant of due process, regardless of whether the state acted in good faith or not. Evidence is potentially useful if it could have been subjected to tests the results of which might have exonerated the defendant. If the state fails to preserve potentially useful evidence, it does not constitute a denial of due process unless defendant can show the state acted in bad faith. The destruction of potentially useful evidence is constitutionally unproblematic, absent a showing that the state acted in bad faith. Step two, 
is if the evidence is considered potentially useful, determining if the state destroyed the evidence in bad faith. To show bad faith, the defendant must show the state made a conscious doing of wrong because of dishonest purpose or moral obliquity. Bad faith requires a showing beyond simple bad judgment or negligence. Still going. We have, um, I think, six more slides before I get to your comments. Number 11, the lost recording of BH was clearly not materially exculpatory. Even if it could be described as potentially useful, it certainly was not destroyed intentionally or in bad faith. Well, how was it destroyed? Like, obviously, it seems like incompetence. Continuing on, 12, that the lack of a recording for an interview with PW is clearly not materially exculpatory for Rick. Even if it could be described as potentially useful, the absence of a recording was not done in bad faith on the part of law enforcement. Well, why are they interviewing BH on camera and just going to PW's house? I think PW was, he had four kids at the time, maybe living at home and maybe he could not go to um, the police station and they went to his house. I'm not sure. 13, BH and PW are still available to be interviewed and or deposed by the defense. So when I read that, this is just me adding, well, the defense made a good point that it would have been helpful to have video recordings to show if they changed their story, BH and PW, if they changed their story over the years. Just like Rick allegedly changed his timeline from 1.30 to 3.30 to noon to 1.30, and that recording is not available to check any kind of conflict. 14, the interviews of PW and BH are not evidence at all related to this case and were part of an investigation following thousands of leads selected by the defense to support a wild theory of this case that lacks a sufficient evidentiary foundation. Wherefore, the state objects to the defendant's motion to dismiss for destruction of exculpatory evidence and would ask the court to deny the same. I mean, it seems to me that McClellan is saying here, yes, we interviewed these guys, we looked into them, but we have not found any decent evidence showing that PW or BH or any of these Odinists are actually involved in the murders or were on the trails that day. February 22nd, order issued by Gull. The summary is Gull reviewed the defense's response to state's motion to compel discovery and the state's objection to defendant's response on discovery filed on February 21st. Gull orders the defense counsel to provide discovery to the state on or before this Friday, March 8th. As the state has advanced no legal authority to support its request to the court, to force the defense counsel to provide deposition exhibits in advance, the court will not compel defense counsel to provide such exhibits. So some people, whoever's keeping a scorecard, score one for the defense and against the prosecution. February 22nd, also issued by Judge Gall. The summary was uh, David Hennessy is this guy, a lawyer who's working with Walden and Rosie. And he's filed a few things on behalf of, um, I guess, both Baldwin and Rosie. Hennessy's request to allow electronic devices at the March 18th contempt hearing is denied. He may contact the court executive for information regarding his request. Uh, I think maybe yesterday or a few, a few days ago, the reporter, Barbara McDonald, said this was granted by the court executive. So Hennessy can have, um, I guess, his laptop and maybe a phone or something. Also on February 22nd, filed by Gull, Gull orders the defense to provide to the state all the exhibits intended to be introduced at the hearing on March 18th on or before tomorrow, March 7th. February 26th, verified ex parte motion for hearing on funding for expert services filed by the defense. I was not able to see this online, so I'm not exactly sure what the defense is looking for money for. <laughs> go fund our defense march 1st no cameras allowed at the march 18th hearings that's what gull said which everybody gets upset hopefully i don't know what do you guys think this trial is going to be televised it better anyway finally again like i started off with motion for early trial filed by the defense today rick wants his trial to start within 70 days and that's around May 15th. I'm not sure when 
it would happen. So I don't know what the next steps are. I know a few lawyers are in the uh, chat. I don't know if anybody wrote any clarification. Hello. Now let me see what I missed for the past. That was 25 minutes. Uh -uh. I'm already 25 minutes behind. Hi, everybody all around the world. Thanks for joining. What do we have here? Yeah, I, I don't know what to think. What do you guys think about this speedy trial? I know a lot of us have been hoping that it would be it would be filed, and here we go. People are saying, oh, well, the prosecution's not ready. The defense isn't ready. I don't know. The defense recently said they have so much more new evidence to review. And I know that um, McClellan said previously that he had given all the discovery over to the defense, I think, before the November 1st deadline. And then it was referenced in a few different uh, filings that he has turned over more stuff. I don't know if it's uh, law enforcement maybe looking into the onus even further. But it seems in that one document that I reviewed, McClellan is saying, yeah, we really didn't find anything on these onus in relation to being involved in the murders. Hi, Hunter. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, everybody, wherever you are. <laughs> Uh-oh. My Tom laugh. Here we go. Hi to everybody who's saying hi. I'm just going through like the hi comments, right? Let's see, where, where are we here? Okay, here we go. Hi, living vicariously, HD. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Babu's Frick. I hope she doesn't deny. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us want this trial to happen as soon as possible. I was kind of surprised that Rick um, signed that. So Rick signed this document saying, he wants his trial to happen within 70 days. Hi, Charmaine. So Charmaine is saying that Judge Gull cannot deny, but the state can file a continuance, which means like a postponement. Hi, Morgan. With all the drama, a speedy trial would be great for a multitude of reasons. I totally agree. Todd was saying something before, uh, one of two, oh, and I see your two. Okay, so I'll review this. Rick's statement was misfiled immediately after a meeting with DNR officer Doolin. The FBI and Delphi investigators never saw it. Richard liter literally did not exist as far as the investigation was concerned, two of two. How can investigators frame Rick with a bullet in the first week when they didn't even know who he was in the first place? He wasn't discovered in their system. He wasn't even on their radar. Well, this trial is going to hopefully provide a lot of clarification on a lot of different issues, including how the heck did, I mean, it's not funny. How did this interview with Rick not get followed up on? I've heard a, var a variety of rumors and I don't really feel like sharing them because you people tell everything, but. <laughs> I don't know the truth, but hopefully we will, we will find out the truth. But as I've said so many times, first of all, I don't even know if Rick is guilty yet. So if he is guilty, obviously failing to follow up on him within the first few days or week had so many negative implications. Uh, if he's not guilty, then not following up him, not following up with him really didn't have any negative consequences. We'll have to wait and see what all this evidence is. Hi, the simulation. About how Rick or anyone else was not seen by the girls because he was in the game trails, not the main trails. Well, we're going to have to wait and see what Rick said on October 13th, 2022, when he said like what he was doing between noon, noon to 1.30. Is he going to say he was on the game trails? I mean, I understand that's that's a possibility, but, and I know people get upset about what was in the PCA and saying it was not true. But from the PCA, it seemed to say Rick parks at CPS, walked to Freedom Bridge, walked the main trail to High Bridge, stood on platform one, and it said after platform one, he went and sat on a bench. It did not say 
what did I say? He went skipping through the woods like Little Red Riding Hood. I mean, time will hopefully tell. If he truly did say that he went straight to the, the main trail, to the bridge, platform one, and back, he's going to be in trouble because these girls walked that entire length between approximately 1230 and whatever, taking their photo at 1243. As a member of the jury, that's not good for Rick if that scenario that I just said uh, played out in actuality. Hi, Carol. The law is different in each state, but this case is the craziest I have ever witnessed. Luckily, I've only witnessed this case and the Missy Beavers case, although Missy Beavers case is still unsolved almost next month. It'll be eight years. It's it's not as crazy as um, Delphi. And the people who follow it are not as crazy as the Delphi people. Hi, Cinder. Cinder replied to the simulation. I thought Rick said he was on the main trails, passed the other girls and sat on benches. So Rick apparently said soon after he arrived, so he arrived around 12, he said when he, I guess, started from Freedom Bridge onto the trail, he passed three girls. He said one was taller, one had brown or black hair, but he did not really pay attention to them and he did not talk to them. So one thing that I've thought about is if police and Liggett was interviewing Rick on October 13th, 2022, Liggett should have known everybody who was on the trails on that day. If he knew that on his list of people on the trails did not include a group of three girls around noon who passed a man resembling Rick around 12.05, then Liggett knew Rick was lying. If it turns out that's a lie, then obviously that's one reason why he was arrested. So we're gonna have to wait till the trial to see exactly who was on the trails and when, and if there was another group of three girls around noon, totally different than these this group of four girls who seem to arrive around 1230. Lots of confusing stuff. <laughs> Hi, Gino. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Excited for Tom to review, react to Rick's court clothing choices at the trial. Yeah, we still haven't seen Rick in a, his, a suit. No comment. I have a comment in my mind, but I'm not going to say. Hi, Miranda. Miranda does not like the slow mode. This is my first live, although I've watched many time videos. My condolences to you. Sometimes the chat gets uh, too quick, so I try to put it on 15 second delay. Hi, Beth. Beth says, I think the defense is doing this speedy trial to avoid possible dismissal on the March 18th contempt hearing. It'll be interesting to see what happens next. I will be doing, tragically, a live chat on March 18th. As I said before, it's not going to be televised, but usually there's nosy people who are in the courtroom who tweet and share what's going on. So I haven't decided yet what times I'll do, probably maybe two different chats for people around the world. Hi, Anne. To me, this signals that Rosie and Baldwin figure they've milked this gravy train for all it's worth and just want to wrap it up now. Wow. Um, how do you really feel, Anne? There's a lot of people who have different opinions, and you're all welcome here. I don't know that that was uh, inappropriate on Anne's part, but um, I'm curious to know. I mean, people have said defense lawyers have a variety of different things to submit to try and get charges dismissed or whatever to get Rick out of prison or jail. We know they filed to suppress evidence and uh, this one I just reviewed, reviewed before trying to get the entire case dismissed because of exculpatory videos were deleted in 2017. So what else, any lawyers or anybody else, what else could the defense file, I don't know, to get Rick to not even have to go to trial?
this is funny. Hi, Courtney. I have 168,000 photos in my phone. Most screenshots trying to figure this case out. Yeah, I have I, I have um, almost 4,000 files on my computer and like 200 subfolders in my Delphi folder. I think I have like three gig. I'm not at 26 terabytes quite yet. Anne says, I don't read much into Baldwin not signing the motion for a speedy trial. It's not technically necessary for both counsel to sign, I don't think. Yeah, usually it's, um, actually not usually, I have seen different filings where it's just either Baldwin or uh, Rosie or both, excuse me. Hi, Owl on the Prowl. Are you no longer dangerous or Dodger? I never knew what the DGR meant, so I'm glad you changed your screen name. <laughs> Ah. Hi, Purdue. Nice to see you. I hope you had a nice vacation. How does Tom know where she went on vacation? What? Ah. I'm blushing. Uh -oh. Anyway, find another comment, Tom, quick. SP74. In Indiana, only one attorney signature is needed. All right, thank you. Charmaine says, no, a speedy can be filed at any point. Miranda, all these Ron Logan spoof accounts. Yeah, I don't know what the, um, this one, what was it? Ron Logan is not your bish. I don't know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Who is my bish? Um, next comment, Tom, quick. Oh, yeah, just so um, hi until tomorrow. This new requested trial date is way sooner than the original one, isn't it? So currently it's scheduled for October 15th. We don't know exactly when the date will be. Obviously, Gull will have to look at her busy social calendar. Um, according to my Googling, 70 days is about uh, mid-May. So we'll see what happens. Hi, running on empty. Good God, this case has been a complete shite show. I totally agree with you. I'm just hoping for the correct resolution. What if Rick is guilty? Hopefully, there's enough evidence to prove it, prove it to a jury. If he's innocent, then ho hopefully he's not going to be falsely convicted. And if he's innocent, he should get millions of dollars from the state of uh, Indiana for what he's been through, but I have not seen either way yet anything showing me 100% if Rick is innocent or 100% if he's guilty. So as all of you, I'm looking forward to seeing what the state is going to present at the trial and also the defense. Hi, JMW, thank you. I know the investigation switched buildings at least twice. Yeah, I know that they got, they rented like external space at some point. But I don't know at what point they like uh, set up that command center, maybe at the Carroll County Sheriff. Hi, DNA King. Hi, Deb's True Crime Notebook. Charmaine says, just that they feel, I guess somebody asked her about, uh, let's see, something. Oh, did this, does this filing imply anything significant from the defense? And Charmaine says, just that they feel, the defense feels ready to go to trial. In my opinion, they're trying to stay ahead of the March 18th hearings results by filing this now. Even if Baldwin and Rosie are removed, speedy trial still has to happen unless uh, postponed possibly by what um mccleland maybe filing something hi what boots and hose what <laughs> thank you oh my gosh
Sorry, I'm just looking for comments that we haven't talked about yet. SP-74, there's no way they were recording everything those early days. Well, I just don't know what the proper procedure is for a detective to go talk to somebody like um, PW at his home. Why would you not record it on either your phone or a tape recorder or... I'm not sure. We know that Doolin, the conservation officer, said he thought he uh, taped every interview he did. So why would, I, I don't know who PW was uh, interviewed by. Maybe local school children. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I can't help like improvising stupid comments though. Hi gang gang. They were recording in the early days. The interviews were done in an interview room. So it was at the Delphi Police Department. But I don't know at what point, as I said before, they switched over to maybe stop doing those at the Delphi Police Department and to start doing them at the Carroll County Sheriff's Office. To June of Barnes, sorry if I messed up your name. Based on what? Their recorded testimony, which has now been erased. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's just another in the list of mess ups by the, the law enforcement investigating the case, but act, mistakes do happen. So I don't think, I, I don't know. I'm sure some people might say, well, there might be something on those interviews with BH and PW and Liggett snuck into the room and deleted it. But I would think there would be some kind of um, whatever statements from 2017 showing, yeah, we, re we realized this either in September of 2017 or whenever it was, August. Hi, Amy. The simulation, has there been any clarification who conducted the interview and who observed FBI versus ISP? Um, are you talking about, I don't know if you're talking about BH or PW. I'm almost certain one of the court filings maybe referenced that the FBI wrote a summary of the interview. I'm not certain about that, sorry. Gang Gang says the interview that was recorded over was the FBI and Carroll County Sheriff's. All right, thank you. Hi, Danielle. Hopefully, oh wait, she's probably gone by now. Um, the prosecution, but prosecution saying FBI and previous investigators' findings regarding Odinism were a, a wild theory. Rude. Well, hasn't the defense said some similar sarcastic stuff in their filings? Hi, Trish. Trish. Trish does not see the trial being televised. I cannot imagine them not doing it. Obviously, if you were one of these witnesses or these juveniles, even the adults on the trail, wouldn't you be totally dreading being on TV or the internet, knowing how much attention is on this case? So I understand that like, maybe Judge Gull will take into consideration that some of these people do not want to be on TV, although I think in certain states, I, I really don't have a lot of experience, obviously, um, with these trials and being broadcast, but I think certain people may be able to request like to not show their face on TV. Can anybody educate me? SP, I would wager the state is ready. Well, it seems like McClelland, I don't remember if it was one or two months ago, he added these four new charges against Rick. So what caused him to add those four new charges? Some people said his first two charges, like which was basically saying that Rick was a bridge guy and said, go down the hill, which was kidnapping, which led to the murder of Abby and Libby. Somebody said like maybe he should have um, also added these four charges at that time in October of 2022. I know that um, McClelland is being helped by a former prosecutor from Indiana, James Luttrell. 
who's been helping him for quite a few months. So maybe he said, we need to add these four new charges, or maybe they have some evidence that they feel like they could now get a conviction on these, I don't, I don't know if I should say upgraded charges, but it seems like previously the charges were saying Rick was the bridge guy. Now they're saying Rick is the killer also. If I'm wrong about that, feel free to correct me. Until tomorrow, I can't do um, emojis in this browser, but thank you. I appreciate it. Ron Logan is not your bish. The state is ready and I am ready for justice. I am hoping for justice also. JMS, they just, they need to just do the trial. I think we all agree. Either they have the evidence or they don't. So even if people want to say McCleveland is incompetent or the defense is incompetent, hopefully whatever is presented to the jury is the most amount of evidence that they have or don't have and the jury will be able to make the proper decision that's all i really care about is proving who bridge guy is and holding him accountable and anybody else i know some people think that there are other people involved partially based on i guess it was in november of 2022 mccleanland said they thought there might be other actors involved what I thought got from that was maybe they knew that Rick's DNA did not match the crime scene. So they wondered, was there somebody else there? So I wondered when these four upgraded charges were done, has there been some kind of revelation about where that DNA at the crime scene came from? Came from? I've speculated previously, which most of my speculation is um, always wrong, which I don't care because it's not a competition to me. I speculated since Libby and Abby were wearing sweatshirts. Could one of their friends have touched a sweatshirt and maybe there was some kind of touch DNA on the sweatshirt that they never, or the police were never, never able to confirm, but maybe they did finally confirm it was a friend. I'm not saying that that's true. Just a possible explanation that will probably end up being false. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> And not common to file a, for a speedy trial after a trial date has been set. But once a trial date was set, they had to hurry up and invoke the speedy trial motion. It may be disputed because of the timing. Well, it only got moved to October 15th once Bald and Rosie were taken off the case. Because as, as of um, October 2022, it was supposed to start, I think, January 8th. And then obviously Gull said, well... Labrado and Scremen need to get caught up. So she said she said it for October 15th. So hopefully within the next few days or early next week, we'll finally get some kind of clarification when this is going to happen. Spark plug Peggy, I haven't seen you in so long. It's nice to see you. Todd, it's just another thing in this trial slash drama. Ultimately, just want everything to be what the families of the victims want and deserve. I agree, but also, as I said, I'm not 100% convinced that Rick is guilty. So he does deserve, um, obviously, a, a fair trial. And I'm sure his family and his wife and his daughter and his mom want to see the full evidence that the prosecution has to know if their family member is indeed responsible for this or not. I, I don't know. I just want a res resolution and the true resolution. My concern is, one, if Rick is guilty, if he gets off on some kind of te technicality or the jury can't, whatever, come to a decision. Or B, if he's innocent, did I say one and B? If he's innocent, then who the hell is Bridge Guy and is this case totally cold? Hi, Peggy. Thanks for joining. Ms. Barnes, not to be that guy, or Mr., sorry, it looks like a female in the avatar, but Gull could very well give RN, I think you mean Bald and Rosie, the boot again based on her contempt findings. Well, I think since the Supreme Court of Indiana on January 18th 
said that Gaul was wrong to boot them, maybe she's going to be apprehensive to boot them again. I mean, don't you think she is kind of sick of all the drama? Would, would you be sick of like everything that she has gone through, which I know some people are freaking out saying, well, she brought it on herself. But I'm just saying, I think Judge Gull would also want to move on from this case. Hi, Shane. Good evening or morning, wherever you are. Anne says, to me, this is just another instance of Rosie and Baldwin fouling up on the procedural law and now trying to play catch up. Hi, Patricia. Yes, that's a nice Lake Tahoe behind me. Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Hi, rescue all the dogs. Yeah, I'll put on my sweatshirt as soon as the sun goes down. Aloha, Kevin. Nice to see you in somewhere different than usual when we're corresponding. I wonder what is the longest time frame Rick can stay in custody without a trial. Seems there should be a limit. I was looking into this a little bit before, and as I said, I mean, I just don't know a lot of stuff about how these trials and stuff work. There seemed to be some kind of one year rule, rule. And also the 70 day speedy trial thing seems to be if the trial does not happen within 70 days, Rick should be allowed to get out of prison, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Gang, gang, the bullet does not need to be an intentional framing. This is a single point of comparison. Lots of pressure to get a match on the unspent round. I think, yeah, there's a lot of drama about this bullet. And a few weeks ago, I guess there was some kind of new drama i guess barbara mcdonald said it was not fat this bull, uh, unspent round was not found i don't know if she said for a few weeks after i know there's been this long time rumor or i guess a rumor because it's not confirmed by police that some woman i guess she was being nosy and went to the crime scene like a few weeks like two to three weeks maybe or up to a month after the murders and she said she saw something shiny and maybe it had blood on it that maybe belonged to the killer so she picked it up and she brought it to i guess the police station or the sheriff's office i i don't know all the facts about this so forgive me if i'm getting anything wrong i don't know I, i've heard a variety of different things about this unspent round and when it was found i would say the most trustworthy thing i've heard is that it was found on the same day that abby and libby were found on the 14th one thing that makes me question if it did take a few weeks is it said it was found two feet from their body. So it's not like it was like 20 feet away. So as they were processing the scene, I don't know, you would think that they would maybe see something two feet away in the Frank's memo. It did say that it was kind of pushed into the ground, which would make sense to me if it truly did like fall out of bridge guy's pocket or something. So one possible explanation could be he pulled back the trigger or not the trigger, the slide on the top of the gun to intimidate the girls, possibly to get them to undress or whatever, do stuff that pops out the round, whether he saw it or not. I, I don't know. I would say I would be more inclined to think that it did not pop out randomly two feet from where they were found because the defense Frank's memo seemed to show that or say that Libby was killed in front of this F tree and then dragged to where she was. So it just seems odd to me that the, he would maybe be um, intimidating them in this other area and then she would be killed over here. So I, I do think it's possible that if he put this unspent round in his jacket and while he was staging the crime scene, it maybe fell out as he's putting these seven branches on their bodies and walking around. And as he's walking around, he stepped on it and it went into the ground. Who knows? I don't think that this um, unspent round is like the biggest piece of evidence. As I've stated previously, if police hopefully got lucky and Rick's car data was still available from five and a half years ago, which 
he only lived um, a mile and a half from CVS where he worked. So he did not probably put on a lot of miles on his car. And so his computer data may not have um, recorded over like the Delphi Police Department data. So if Rick's car data was captured from the day of the murders and it's either gonna exonerate him or convict him. So if it shows that he lied and he was not there from noon to 1.30, it's going to show he arrived maybe around 128 and if he left around 4 p.m then to me as a member of the jury like that unspent round has like nothing really to do i mean obviously it has something to do with the case but if this guy lied and said he was there noon to 130 but his car says he was there 130 to 4 i really don't need to see much more to convict him i mean he was there at c at cps for that time Alternatively, if his car showed that he only drove from noon to 1.30 on the day of the murders, then why is he still in prison? And why did the defense not bring up that point in any of their filings? And also, sorry if I'm rambling, if the prosecution has that data, why did they not put that into anything that they have filed? Obviously, they did not take Rick's car until October 13th. So they would not have put that in the PCA because they did not have that data yet. Sorry, I just have like these conversations with myself and hundreds of people and just watch me. <laughs> ah. Hi, Gen X Rando. Nice to see you. It would be nice if this trial wraps up before a decade passes since the crime. Yeah. Uh, hi, Jake. Or Jock K. Don't defense attorneys push for speedy trial to lock the prosecution into whatever evidence they want to use. Then they delay and stall, and the trial gets pushed back a year or two, my guess. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience uh, following true crime cases, so I, I don't know any other cases to really reference. Uh, sorry. But it's, as I said before, I think the prosecution has whatever evidence they're ever going to get. So that's that. It's raining really hard. Sorry if you hear that background noise. Deb's true crime notebook. 180 days unless the defense delays the trial. Oh, so that was this. Um, Kevin asked, what is the longest time that Rick can stay in custody without a trial. Anne is surprised that I'm backtracking on Rick likely guilty. What's next? I, I, I'm waiting to see all the evidence before I make a decision. And ho hopefully there is going to be enough evidence for all of us, and more importantly, the jury and the families and Rick's family to make a final decision. Aloha, Ling Ling. Shane says, surely Prosecutor McClelland can't oppose a quick trial. He's had it longer to prepare. That's a good point, Shane. The simulation, Rick is not exactly going to say I was in the woods amusing myself looking at teenage girls. Well, he said, Rick said he was there at noon to 1.30 and he only saw three girls soon after he arrived. So for 85 minutes, Rick said he did not see anybody. He only saw girls as soon as he entered the trails. I mean, as a member of the jury, I, I need to hear some more about what, what went down there. Hi, Metal Mama Michelle, thank you. Anne says, Judge Gull is very likely to grant this. I think the whole state of Indiana legal system is fed up with Rick, Rosie, and Baldwin. Just get on with it. We'll see what happens. Charmaine, are you sure? Charmaine says, oh, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know what these other things are, um, what you're referencing. Oh, AJ, Charmaine, are you surprised of this new filing 
after defense just received a huge batch of discovery or no? Charmaine says, no, not at all. This is a smart move on the part of the defense. Depositions are done. Are you sure? Because there's a lot of people to depose. Like all these witnesses, I don't think these people on the trails have been deposed yet by either side. Contempt hearing upcoming. Reasonable doubt everywhere. Not surprised at all. Todd has made up his mind. Rick is bridge guy. It's not complicated. It's beyond reasonable to conclude he's bridge guy based on the PCA and his confessions, which capitalized did happen. Is not reasonable to dismiss PCA, blame law enforcement for lying or Odinus. As I said before, I mean, if there's some kind of car or phone data showing that Rick was on the trails when he said he was not, that's not good, obviously. What are these um, supposed phone confessions going to say? There's rumors that Rick also confessed or made very incriminating statements saying he killed Abby and Libby to medical and mental health professionals at Westville Prison. I know he also supposedly in these court filings, I guess by the prosecution over the past whatever year, has made suicidal statements to officials at both Westville and where he is now at Wabash Prison. I don't know. I'm sure people will have an opinion on this, but why is an innocent person threatening suicide if he knows he's innocent and going to get be found not guilty? I know that triggers a lot of people, but I'm just saying as like an independent observer. Hi, we the people. If the trial is within 70 days or so, do you think the prosecution will bring charges against anyone else between now and then? I would say no. I mean, a lot of us have been waiting, but it's like Rick was arrested almost a year and a half ago. I know law enforcement has made a lot of mistakes, but they have not found anybody else to charge yet in a, almost a year and a half. So did Rick act alone? Was Rick at home at 145? We'll see. It seems like the prosecution is saying they don't have any kind of evidence pointing to anybody else. So I think these four recent upgraded charges against Rick are saying he is the killer. And it seems like um, they're going to say he was the only one involved. Although popping into my mind is that in the Frank's memo, apparently Liggett and Lesenby at some point said they thought it was more than two people involved. So stay tuned for the final evidence at the trial. Owl on the prowl. Let's hope 12 jurors feel the way Todd does, which is Rick is guilty. I would say let's wait for all the evidence, people. Uh, I don't know what you're re referencing here, Shane. Gang, gang, that is spot on. We did hear Nick asking for more money, and he said he was understaffed. Yeah, I, I remember that part. I think he said he wanted $5,000 more each for him and maybe the deputy prosecutor, and also to hire a clerical assistant at some point, maybe about a year ago. Well, $5,000, I mean, I was going to say that's not a lot of money, but I, I mean, I think... McClelland has been working overtime with all this stuff going on. So I ain't mad at him getting $5,000 more. Todd says 12 means 12 jurors means there's always an opportunity for poor deductive reasoning skills. 
Yeah, how's, how are the deductive reasoning skills in uh, Indiana? <laughs> An hour and four minutes. I don't know. I might go to about uh, two hours. Not three hours today. <laughs> Remind me when it's two hours so I don't go for four hours. Hi, Bees9. Defense always seems to file speedy trial when they feel there's a threat they could be booted. Noticing a pattern. Are you saying in other cases? Because this is the first time Bald and Rosie have filed the motion for speedy trial, which they said that they had Rick sign last August, but I guess they were waiting for the November 1st discovery deadline. And then obviously all hell broke loose in mid-October. Hi, the humble grower. Thank you. What are you growing? What? <laughs> are you growing or showing? Uh oh, that was inappropriate. Sorry. Highlight something else. Danielle, in my opinion, right or wrong, the prosecution is going to be in big trouble if they're sorry. If their main evidence is eyewitness testimony, especially teenage girls. Did you? All right. She did not finish her. A second part. We, we don't know what they found after October 13th, 2022. Obviously, in the Frank's memo, the defense listed seven items that were very good for Rick and his innocence, saying his DNA was not found at the scene. I don't know. Do I really? I don't, I don't want to look for that uh, PowerPoint slide. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. So there are good things um, pointing towards Rick's innocence, but the prosecution seems to feel like they could also get a conviction um, showing that Rick is the killer. So I think we just have to wait and see what they have found since October 13th, 2022. Gang, gang, the defense is going to file literally everything. That's how it goes, lol. Well, what else can they fi uh, file to get Rick out of, uh, where is he, Wabash? Yeah, this is a good point, Shane. Hello. Can't wait to see the witness list. Popcorn. <laughs> yeah, so which witness are you guys most um, interested in hearing from? For me, it would be the five, or actually six, I guess you could say, with the younger sister. So the four girls who are there, whatever. I, I don't know when they arrived, but approximately 1230 to 130. They said, at least three of them said, they passed a man around 130, 135, matching bridge guy, matching Libby's video. Witness four said she saw a man matching bridge guy, or at least the video of um, Libby's video. I, I, a lot of us want to hear what witness four has to say on the stand. And also the 357 uh, witness. Who else? Hi, Kelt. Could be wrong, but this is the first time the defense has filed for a speedy trial. So no, they aren't filing because they are in trouble. That was, I guess, the response to somebody else uh, making a comment. Hi, Patricia. Rick admitted to being on the trail that day, and a couple of child-killing Odinists were apparently there. What are the chances that there were three child killers on the same trail? Well, Rick is saying that he's not a child killer and that he left by 1.30. I don't know. I, I think it's interesting that none of those witnesses that I just described said they saw any Odinists, anyone matching the Odinists. As far as we know, BH clocked out at work at 2.45, so it takes 30 minutes to even get to Delphi. PW is like six foot four to six foot six. He's not a bridge guy, so... I don't know. There were some interesting points about the Odinists and obviously the FBI behavioral analysis unit or something. They seem to say that they thought Odinists were involved in the crime at the crime scene. 
also Rick's temporary uh, public defender, Labredo, gave a few interviews and he said, he, what did he say? Um, he felt like Rick is 100% innocent, had nothing to do with the murders, and one of the girls was sacrificed. So what is he seeing that makes him believe that? Hi, the Red Queen. Thank you. I don't know if you're, there is somebody in the chat called Todd, so I don't know if this is for him or me. Do you still think Kagan Klein is involved? I'm going to answer what I think. It's been seven years since they first raided Rick, uh, Rick's, um, Kagan's house. He's still not charged. His dad has never been charged. So what are police waiting for to charge Kagan? They obviously have not found anything to charge him with Delphi. So I'm not expecting Kagan or his dad to be charged. I know in his uh, August 2020 interview, they were saying, well, you said you were going to meet her and she did not show up, but I don't know, whatever. <laughs> well, actually not whatever, because some people, it seems like almost half of the people online still think that Kagan and or his dad were involved in the murder. So neither Kagan, his dad, or Ron Logan were mentioned in the 136 pages of the Franks memo, which is essentially to take um, attention away from Rick as being the killer. So it doesn't seem like the defense has seen evidence that points to Kagan, his dad, or Ron Logan. Kagan is Ron Logan's bitch. Oh my God, sorry. Stop improvising, Tom. Todd is talking to somebody. I've been saying it's the jacket of Bridge Guy. Hood, hat, and scarf that make Rick Bridge Guy. No one else was overdressed like that with 40s and sunny. The scarf didn't hide him. It made him stand out. Well, contrary to um, some people's crazy opinions, I'm not biased, so I do kind of call out certain things. If you see um, some of my previous videos, I have shown these two sisters on bench two for the 126 p.m. photo. And the younger sister did have a hoodie with her hood on. So she, as I said in my video, how did Rick not see these girls? Maybe she was having a bad hair day and it was not cold. But, I mean, you are right. Rick did say that he's not a bridge guy. He said he had on a head covering and a hood and a blue or black uh, Carhartt jacket. I don't know. I know that in the October 13th, 2022 list of items taken from his house, a short build hat was taken. And according to Doug Rice, AKA bitter beat poet on Reddit, he said that one of the girls said bridge guy who they passed at 1.30, was wearing a short build hat. I know a lot of us have kind of debated when we look at the Bridge Guy video, what the heck is that thing around his uh, waist? Is it a brown shirt or sweatshirt hanging out or some kind of brown, whatever, a bag or pack? I'm curious to know if Rick's wife ever said, yes, he owned like a brown pack that would match that or a brown shirt or sweatshirt. I don't think the list of items taken from his house in October included any kind of brown shirt or brown sweatshirt. I've also kind of wondered, sorry, I ramble so much. How far behind am I? Um, <laughs> I'm only uh, 35 minutes behind. What have I wondered? I wonder since Bridge Guy is coming towards Abby and Libby with certain items stuffed into his jacket, could, when they got to the crime scene, whoever Bridge Guy is, did he open up his jacket and take those items and put them on the ground or whatever, whatever they were? And did he take off the blue jacket and leave it far away from like the main crime scene because he knew he was going to stab them and maybe get blood on his clothing? And if this truly is Rick, which there's also been debate for people who have seen the, what is it, like the 
November 2016 video that Rick's wife took where Rick is sitting in the car and she sneaks up on him and scares him. He's wearing a blue jacket. To me, it looks like a heavier material than Bridge Guy's like windbreaker type jacket, but I don't know. I guess time will tell to see what kind of jacket police took from Rick's house. So I don't know. I'm rambling. Sorry. Um, let's move on to a different one. Charmaine, if Gull has another trial that starts before this 70 day window, then that trial has to finish before this one starts. Anything not started has to be rescheduled. I think they currently blocked off. What is it? Three weeks for the trial? I don't know. I think there's it's going to be a lot longer than that. There's a lot of witnesses to call forward. Barnes DB is what I'm going to call you. Right to a speedy trial is a constitutional right, not a ploy by the defense. Hi, Vanessa. Thanks for saying I'm covering it. Al on the prowl, even if Rick said he was on the trail between 12.30 to 1.30 or 1.30 to 3.30, he's going to need an alibi. What are you saying for 1.45 to whatever, 2.15, to show that he was at home? It doesn't seem like he went to McDonald's at 1.45 and has a credit card receipt to show, yeah, I after I left the trails at 1.30, I went to the McDonald's in town and I used my credit card to buy lunch. So here's this proof that I was gone by 1.30. I have not seen that any kind of reference to something like that yet. I've wondered, I, I don't know, like what are Rick's phone records going to show? Does his home phone record show that he placed a call, whatever, between 1.40 to 4 p.m. when Bridge Guy was probably at the crime scene? I, I don't know. It's been said that Rick's wife worked at a vet. So if Rick was home, did he use their home phone between whatever, 1.40 to 4 p.m.? That would be good evidence to show that Rick was at home. We'll see. Hi, Miranda. Nice to see you. Did you look into Kegan Klein being on the witness list after the new charges? Yes, I did. We, we talked about that previously. So when McClellan filed these four new charges, like on the bottom left and the top right of these various pages, it listed like, I don't even know, 10 to 15 people. Some were people on the trails around like one, or sorry, 1230 to 3.30. And most of them I think were like law enforcement officers. Rick's wife was also listed. I don't know that that necessarily is a witness list though. I'm not sure what the title was, but I did look back, uh, Miranda, and Kagan was not listed on those four new charges then in that list of uh, people. Hi, Teresa. We can hear you or read you for filth. Sorry. <laughs> I said for filth. Okay. Anyway, some people don't know what that means. Uh, until tomorrow, Rick must have a screw loose. Otherwise, why would he volunteer that he was wearing the exact clothes bridge guy had on? There's still this debate about what point did Rick interact with police? I've heard a lot of different things, and obviously there's only one thing that can be true. Some people wonder, did he come forward before the bridge guy, two screenshots were released on the night of the 15th? I've heard some other things that I'm not really gonna say because I don't wanna cause drama, but did he not know that uh, bridge guy was captured on camera when he talked to the conservation officer. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> Charmaine, thank you as always, you're so nice. Question for smarter people, is it 70 business days or 70 calendar days? Probably 
business days. I only asked Google about calendar days. Uh oh, I missed one. Here we go. Sorry, I'm just looking at comments. Oh, thank you for clarifying this, AJ. Did none of y'all listen to PW? Um, Pat, well, I don't like to say these people's names. PW, his first interview on the YouTube channel Sleuth Intuition. The owner suspect, PW, said the first time law enforcement spoke with him, it was just about his kids knowing the girls. All right, thank you for clarifying. Kevin, unfortunately, it's responsible. Or sorry, it's possible that law enforcement's mistakes early on will cause reasonable doubt in the jury's minds. Well, it's not just law enforcement mistakes early on; it's throughout the entire investigation. But as I said before, if there is some kind of like indisputable data, like Rick's car or phone, all of these police police mistakes to me as a jury member. I'm not going to discount Rick's car being there from 1 30 to four and be like, Oh, well, police messed up. So I'm going to let this guy not be found guilty. There's certain evidence that I think is undisputable. Whether it exists in this case remains to be seen. Hi, Wampo. Nothing really. Just me being a fool. Gang gang says the FBI does not record interviews. They were in the police station interview room, which had a DVR system that recorded. Well, didn't you say, no, I'm not like double checking your work, gang gang. Didn't you say before that the FBI was involved with the interview on February 17th of BH? I don't know. I don't know that it's really important. That was not a diss to you, but I'm just saying and I'm not saying that the deletion of these um, recordings are not important. I'm just saying um, whether or not the FBI was in the uh, room or something. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> Let's not talk about Delphi. Bob Boo's, I always get this wrong. Bob Boo's Frick. Do you ever get ham on your pizza? No. Usually I like prefer Domino's with just hot sauce. Start judging me now, even more than you already do, everybody. Hi, FireTech. I've not followed you long enough to know what you do regarding posts when a trial is underway. When do you normally post videos in correlations to trials? Well, I've only done deep dives on Delphi and Missy Beavers, and Missy Beavers is still unsolved. So. This will be my first trial. When do you normally post videos in correlation to trials? If it's televised and it's streaming somehow, I will do like a live chat with that. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll post a community post when I know more about when the trial is and if it's going to be televised. I really don't have any other videos planned for Delphi other than live chats. Uh-oh, Todd is triggered and shooketh. You have basic deductive reasoning skills, so how are you not able to conclude that Rick is the only man who could have fit all of the parameters for Bridge Guy? He fits perfectly and confessed, really with two question marks. Because when I look at the Bridge Guy video, the two seconds of the 43-second video, I see two different faces. Like there's one at the beginning and then there's one at the end that looks different than the beginning one. And neither of them really stand out to me as, okay, that is definitely Rick Allen. I've not heard enough of Rick's voice to determine whether that's his voice saying, guys, go down the hill. As I stated before, the defense listed seven items that are beneficial towards Rick's innocence. So his DNA was not found. They said stuff about like, Nothing on a social media showed a connection to Abby and Libby. I would just like to see more evidence before I say I know that Rick is guilty. Uh, 
Hi, Carol. Good morning. Good morning, Australia. Can you do a quick summation of what has happened for you to do a live, please? Um, the summary is Rick's def uh, defense attorneys filed to have the trial start within about 70 days, which would be like maybe mid-May. It's currently scheduled for mid-October. You can go back to sleep and move on with your day. That's basically all we're talking about and various other things. Gang gang, recording over the interviews also doesn't have to be a grand conspiracy. It's about, comp in sorry, it's about incompetence. Well, it seems like for it to get the entire trial thrown out, didn't it say that it had to be a grand conspiracy? Like if they just made a mistake, that's not enough to throw out the entire case. That's what I got from that. But everybody has a different opinion. Kevin says, well, Tom, sit up a little bit. An hour and 25 minutes, maybe like 35 more minutes of this nonsense. How do we explain the three Libby's shoes found? One Kelsey referred to first before the stream. So you're saying south of um, Deer Creek. The one in Deer Creek that we've seen photos of. And the one at the scene, apparently under Abby's body. I think the first one, like the first rumor was that, I, I forget some of these facts, but I think when they were searching on the 14th, somebody yelled down, whatever, down by the creek, that they found a shoe. And I think people kind of maybe misinterpreted that, that the shoe was actually in the land, in the grass, or whatever, south of the creek, when in reality, Libby's black and white Nike sneaker was found with the two other items like caught up into whatever, some kind of um, downed tree or whatever. And her second sneaker was found either under Abby or under Libby. I think there's been two different descriptions. So there are not uh, three different shoes of uh, Libby, sorry. This is a good point, DB. Were those two interviews of BH and PW the only ones missing? What other information was lost due to the DVR gremlins? That's a very good point. If I was thinking, we know that witness four spoke to police within a few days. So is her video interview totally missing? And that's a good point. Like who else is missing? And was there like a proper summary of each interview taken uh, i don't know what the answer is though i think this is a diss but i'm okay highlighting disses miss north's musings Rick wasn't even a suspect in the case until a couple of years ago, was he? He was not a suspect until the PCA said on September 21st, a tip narrative was presented to Detective Liggett. September 21st, 2022, October 13th, they searched his house. He was arrested October 26th to the 28th. Law enforcement certainly were focused on others, so that doesn't really bring, bring it for a mis mistrial. Tom, your logic and brilliance really shows. I think that was sarcasm. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. It probably was. I don't know. I'm not brilliant and I'm not logic. Logical. Oh my gosh. How many people are watching? 383. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Shane was going to take two weeks holidays from work for the trial. I ain't booking mid-May just yet. Gull would bust my bubble in the blink of an eye. Thank you, Ron Logan, the spirit of his bish. Yeah, I heard there was like, um, some people are still saying that Ron is the killer. Yeah, so I didn't uh, talk about that. Apparently there's a documentary that I, I watched it, but it was really not worth two hours of my time. The only thing that was new was this former girlfriend of Ron Logan for, I guess she said six years. I mean, she seemed to be very traumatized by it, uh, her relationship with Ron. 
she seemed to say that she knows that Ron was bridge guy and that he is responsible for the killings, but I'm not in any way saying that she's lying or wrong. She obviously had a lot more interactions with Ron than I have. But as I've said previously, when I see the noon, whatever, 11.55 a.m. video of Ron Logan at the transfer station throwing out garbage, he's wearing big ass boots almost halfway up to his knees, dark blue jeans, a jacket that does not match bridge guys, and he does not have any head covering, and he's wearing his prescription eyeglasses. I see nothing resembling that two hours later when bridge guys captured on video. I do not hear a 77 year old man saying, guys, go down the hill. Police moved on from Ron Logan seven years ago. So if you don't want to move on from him, that's up to you, but I moved on from Ron Logan. I'm not his bish anymore. Hi, Edward. I hope you get off of work soon. And this will be a regular weight of the circumstantial evidence case like most cases. It's not that he's likely to be found innocent. It would be an acquittal. Grounds for suing Indiana would be sketchy. Well, Gull previously criticized Rosie for filing this notice of tort claim or whatever, saying that at some point Rick and maybe like Baldwin and Rosie on behalf of Rick might be suing the state or whatever for whatever wrongful incarceration or certain things that happened at Westville. And Gull was like, well, that's kind of shady that you're maybe trying to make some money off of this case. Like you're looking too far ahead. I think that was what she said. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's that. Hi, Linda. I thought they already said that cameras in the courtroom were allowed. No. The defense filed something a few months ago saying we want cameras at every hearing to show the world how this stuff works. And then obviously on October 19th, I think it was, they were like, um, where's the back door? We don't want them to see this. And then since then, Gull has not allowed anything, any cameras in the courtroom. Although I don't know that there's really been any hearing since October 19th. We'll have to wait and see. I'll, I'll be disappointed if I cannot see like this entire trial and have to depend on people tweeting about it. Wampa says, I thought live recording was not allowed in Indiana. I don't know, though. Indiana had some pilot program about cameras in the courtroom, and it seemed to go well, including Judge Gull was part of that program. And she, I believe, at some point said she was she thought the cameras in the courtroom were a good thing. So I don't know. There's been a lot of these hearings that she did not think it was a good thing for this case. But I don't know. Was there was there a certain uh, deadline or whatever, a start date? Was it this past? I don't know. I don't know if there was a certain start date for it to happen, not in the pilot program, but to be like throughout Indiana for the actual uh, trials. Danielle says, it is not uncommon for televised trials to still involve witnesses that are not shown on camera. I would hope that is how it is handled with this case which I certainly hope is televised, right? Thank you for clarifying. Although Charmaine wants to put some water on your hopes, I don't think it will be televised. We'll, we'll have to find out and see as we get closer to the trial date, whenever that's gonna be. Shane says, I seriously doubt Rick will take the stand. We've talked about this previously and a lot of people get upset when I say, well, if I was innocent, I would stand up for myself and people, get upset and say, no, if you're accused of a murder, you're supposed to let your attorneys speak up for you. You might get your words caught up under the prosecution asking you questions, but I'm not going to lie. As a jury member, if somebody's accused of killing two kids and they're just going to sit at the defense table and not stand up for themselves, 
that doesn't look good in my eyes. And I know some people are saying, well, he doesn't have to stand up for himself. His attorneys are going to be doing the talking. So we'll see what happened. I seriously doubt Rick will take the stand. I do agree with you about that, Shane. But I would stand up for myself if I was truly on the trails from noon to 1.30. And this is a huge either misunderstanding or framing of Rick. Hi, Aspen Connor. Yes, Ohio, I know, lets witnesses opt out of being either uh, either and being recorded or filmed. I don't think Indiana has that option, though. Well, look into it and do a video on it. Hi, Paul. Thank you very much for your generosity. I appreciate it. Sorry, I lost my place for a second. I'm busy doing other things. It, that's your responsibility. <laughs> my spreadsheet isn't long enough. It doesn't have enough rows. Hi, Cinder. I'm a little surprised that they would file this right after all of that new evidence was entered. You think they'd want more time. Yeah, they said they needed more time, but maybe, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. Maybe they know what's in there. I don't know. And it's not stuff that's good for Rick to show maybe there truly isn't anything exculpatory for Rick in that evidence. Time will hopefully tell. Gang, gang, they had to add the other charges, the four new charges against Rick. It's rare for someone to get charged and convicted of felony murder without a co-conspirator. They realized they were going to have a harder time with felony murder. All right, thank you for clarifying. And some people are saying, when, once these were filed, these uh, so he has a total of six charges against him. Even if the jury does not convict him of these, like the higher four murder charges, they could still do this lesser kidnapping charge where they say, okay, he is bridge guy. We feel like the prosecutor proved that beyond a reasonable doubt. So we're going to charge Rick with, or say he's guilty for um, being bridge guy, but we can't say we know for sure that he essentially is the one who uh, used the knife on them to kill them. Hi, Devin, Marie, B. The state needs to be ready at the time they bring charges. I'd hope they're ready. I can't imagine that he's not ready. It's like they either have evidence or not. Even if he presents it bad, which I'm not saying that he's going to, hopefully the jury has good deductive skills, like Todd said. Is anybody in Indiana moving to Allen County as soon as possible to get on this jury? So you can sneak your phone in and, and live stream for us. Danielle, McClelland is on the record as saying he does not believe Rick did it alone. Well, unofficially on record. Well, you're saying because in November of 2022, when he says he thought there was other actors involved? Maybe the DNA aspect of it can explain away why he said that. If it turned out to be like a friend of the girls. I'm sure some people are thinking, well, how are you gonna explain away Liggett and Lesenby apparently saying also they thought it was more than one person. Based on my expert spreadsheet of my timeline, based on the Frank's memo, list of actions that bridge guy or the killer would have had to take if he was the only person involved. I do think one person could have done this in the time frame. We know that the video starts at 213. According to the PCA, the killer was spotted on 300 at 357. So that's over an hour and a half to just cross the creek, at least get Libby to remove her clothes. I know there's this issue of was Abby unclothed and then totally redressed, including Libby's sweatshirt and Libby's jeans. 
I, I don't know. I just think that it, it was possible for one person to do this, even somebody who's uh, five foot four or five foot six, which Rick is. Shane seems to agree with me. Ted Bundy killed two girls and assaulted two others in the sorority house in 25 minutes. Delphi killer had over an hour, lone wolf uh, plausible. Anne says, going to be a very methodical presentation of circum circumstantial case by state. Lots of jumping up and down by Rosie and Baldwin with wild alternative theories trying to create reasonable doubt. Well, if they bring up, which it seems like they are going to, because in a recent filing, the defense said essentially that PW and BH were responsible for the murders of Abby and Libby. So what is the prosecution going to do to say, well, here's the reasons that we think they were not? I know in some recent filing by the defense, they said that law enforcement created drafts of search warrants for the phone data of, uh, I think it was BW, hello, PW and BH. Sorry if I annoy you with these um, initials, but I don't want to say these people's names. They've not been arrested. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so the defense said there was these drafts of AT&T phone search warrants for the cell phone data of both BH and PW, but it seems like they were never executed to show any kind of phone data for these two Odinists that the defense is saying were involved in the murders. I mean, that's not good that uh, law enforcement did not follow up with those uh, search warrants. We do know that the Rushville guy, EF, who has the mental capacity of a seven or eight year old, the defense in the Franks memo said, his phone showed that there was no activity on the day of the murders between 10 30 a.m and 7 p.m so obviously it seems like law enforcement did execute a search warrant for his phone data so why would they not do it for bh and pw maybe they felt like since they went to bh's work and were told that he clocked out at 245 did they believe that and not think they needed uh phone data i'm not sure before I forget, hold on. Let me show you these pictures. It's nothing exciting, so calm your hormones. <laughs> so previously I've said, let me show this first. Yeah, I'll just show this. Previously, I have said, let me get this thing here. Previously, I've said that this there's this 1.27 p.m. Hoosier Harvest Store camera that in the PCA, there's been two different, there's been three different versions of the PCA over the last year. The first one says the car at 1.27 headed towards CPS resembles Rick's 2016 Ford Focus, which is on top here. In a, in a later PCA edit, it said it appears to match Rick's car. So in a previous live chat, I said, how many cars in Delphi in this small town of 2,800 people on 300 North, which does not have a lot of traffic, how many cars would match Rick's car? And I said previously, I doubt there's a lot of cars driving around Delphi that are black, that have these black hubcaps instead of like silver hubcaps or rims, whatever you want to call them. So this top picture here, I'm sure some of you have seen it before in my videos. I'm not 100% certain this is Rick's 2016 Ford Focus, but I'd say I'm 99% sure. So this is, if you zoom out on this picture, it's the CPS in, not CPS, CVS Pharmacy in Delphi where Rick worked. This main photo is from a drone from around uh, August, 2022. So about two months before Rick was arrested, a real estate firm is trying to sell the CVS pharmacy building in Delphi for $3 million. It's still not bought. 
so it seems like Rick backed that thing up in the corner of this CVS parking lot. So why I'm showing this is because I previously said, I don't think there's a lot of cars driving around Delphi that match Rick's unique car and hubcaps. But if you go to Google Maps, they have this thing called, what I don't know what it's called. Like you can see the history where the street view, they take photos of all these streets around the country and the world. And so in September of 2022, a month before Rick was arrested, the CVS in Delphi, if you look on Google Maps, it shows this car in this exact same spot where Rick was parked in about August of 2022. The reason I'm showing this, this is just to say there is another car in Delphi, at least in uh, summer of 2022, that seems to somewhat match Rick's car. It's not the same exact car. The headlights are different. The backlights are different. The windows are different. But I'm just saying, since I previously said, oh, there's no other car in Delphi, it has to be Rick's, if that's what police are saying. I, I don't know what kind of car it is on the bottom. And if it is after one that was in production in uh, February of 2017, when the killings happened. But I just thought it was interesting that there is a car parked in that same spot in Delphi in 2022 that uh, could kind of resemble something that might have been on the Hoosier Harvester camera at 127. And just one other quick, uh, sorry if that was boring to people, but that's the theme of my live chats. This is just a backwards view of it. So it's definitely different than Rick's car. But whose car is that? Bernie, do you know whose car that is at the Delphi CVS? Bernie lives in Delphi. Send me a message on Facebook and let me know who it is. <laughs> and find out if they had it in February 2017. And do a spreadsheet and PowerPoint presentation for me. Charmaine says incriminating statements were made by Rick on the phone, apparently, uh, on April 3rd, 2023, to his wife and possibly his mom. May or may not be a confession. Wording matters. And I also believe like tone of voice matters. So these whole confessions are very interesting to me. I'll talk about it for one minute, then I'll move on. Well, we're at an hour 47. Um, we'll see how long we got. Um, So April 3rd, Rick apparently meet, meets with the intern and the investigator for the defense team. What happens next? We're going to see on video if Rick, after this meeting, what happens? Does he go back to his cell holding some kind of papers? Like what is his body language? Which I don't, people say they're body language experts and I'm always like, I roll. Um, <laughs> but I think in this case, like, what am I thinking? What's my, evaluate me, everybody. I'm cold. Um, does Rick go back to his cell and like freak out? Is he looking at these papers that he just got? Does he start crying? Is he like throwing them all over the place? Like at what point does he pick up his tablet and call his wife and apparently confess repeatedly saying that he killed Abby and Libby? I mean, the stuff is going to, I think in its totality, if the prosecutor shows the video of Rick on April 3rd before this meeting, was he acting quote unquote normal? And then he meets with the intern and investigator and he comes back and he's acting cray cray and he calls his wife. Like, what is his tone of voice? Is he saying crazy stuff or is he like crying and sounding like somebody who is finally revealing this huge secret to his wife. I do find it very interesting, the timing of this. April 3rd, as I said before, he met with the defense team. The defense team previously has said for the first five months, like around December 2nd, 2022, to April 3rd, 2023, Rick was essentially mentally okay in Westville in solitary confinement. They said he didn't, they met with him on March 24th and he was okay mentally. They said he lost weight and so physically 
he had been deteriorating deteriorating since uh, the beginning of whatever uh, 2023. But it just seems really odd to me that Rick was fine for five months, meets with his defense team, possibly gets pieces of paper saying, here's some evidence, Rick. Did he feel like, oh, crap, there's no way I can explain this away. They know I'm guilty. I can't. I'm going to be found guilty. So I have to call my wife and say the truth. I'm almost certain that that um, video and the synced up audio for his phone calls will be shown at the trial. So we'll wait. I don't know that, as we said before, is this going to be televised? And will, will we, the nosy ass people, be given access to that? We'll see. Carol Carol has a very good point. Everyone's concern should be justice for all. Yes, Abby and Libby and justice for Rick to get a fair trial. Because if he's innocent, this is obviously a horrible situation he's been through for the past year and a half. A simulation in, in, in anticipation of trial testimony, I'm buying my new spiral bound Delphi notebook tomorrow. I'm so old. What are you gonna do? with your notebook, give a summary of everybody's testimony. Ron Logan is not your bish. And Rick told a healthcare worker, that's not been confirmed yet. Um, I know that the defense has tried to prevent access to Rick's Westville medical and mental health records repeatedly. They've also said repeat repeatedly that Rick is innocent and he has nothing to hide. So as a jury member or a nosy person, it makes me wonder why are they trying to hide Rick's health and his medical and mental health records? Did he truly say things to whatever psychiatrist or psychologist or any kind of doctor at Westville implicating himself in the murders? I, I do think that um, McClellan should have access to that. If the defense is going to say that Rick lost his mind on April 3rd, and that is why he called his wife and said he killed Abby and Libby. As a member of the jury, I want to have access to that information so I can make the correct decision about whether Rick is truly innocent or guilty. Todd, you make some good points. With a checklist of all parameters that must be true for Bridge Guy, Rick is the only man who fits perfectly day off from work Part at CPS, same height, clothes, scarf, time, place, witnesses, gun, bullet. Well, some of those, I don't know that we can say are for sure. Day off, yes. Part at CPS, yes. Some people disagree, but the defense said he part at CPS, so move on with your lives, please. <laughs> same height, people disagree. The um, witnesses at 130 who passed Bridge Guy, some of them said he came up to their shoulder. I know Libredo said that Rick was five foot six. There's obviously certain government documents that show he's five foot four. But even Rick said he had a hat or a head covering and a hood. If he's five foot six and he has a hat and a whatever, a hood, could that add three to four inches, making him appear like five foot nine or whatever? even though bridge guy apparently had his head down. I don't know. There's a lot of variables here. Um, Rick did not say he had a scarf on. I know that the uh, 130 witness did say that bridge guy had a scarf up to his nose. Gang gang confessions are taken by the police, not over a phone call to a family member. Well, as a member of a jury, what are you going to believe more so a man calling his wife and saying i killed those girls i think that um in the def i've mentioned this before because i mentioned everything over and over every live chat the frank's memo it seems like some people have said was the frank's memo just trying to take attention away from rick's supposed confession to his wife there was this on page 22 there was this whole drama about this fake quote that the defense created, essentially saying the guards are saying, or whatever, because the guards are like uh, videotaping Rick's mouth as he talks to uh, the defense attorneys, 
Rick would not feel comfortable saying something like, quote, the guards are telling me my family will be killed unless I call my wife and tell her I killed those girls, end quote. Roughly, that was the quote. So when I read, I killed those girls, it made me think, Did is that truly what Rick says to his wife? I killed those girls. And so the defense team needed to come up with something to take attention away from their, whatever, the defendant saying to his wife, yeah, I'm guilty. And they came up with this idea to blame the onus guards, which they put in the footnote below to be whatever, to be clear. Richard Allen has never said this quote about the guards saying, we'll kill your wife if you don't call her and confess, which to me is so whack that like a guard would say that to an, uh, an inmate, which I know there are some guards who are shady and do stuff, but to say that they would tell Rick, you have to call your wife and say you're guilty. Like why the F would they care? I know some people would say, well, their Odinists and their Odinist friends are going to be found out to be guilty, but I've not seen any evidence showing that the two Odinist guards at Westville were friends with these five Odinists who are accused of uh, being the murderers by the defense team and also whatever the Click, Ferency, and Murphy law enforcement team and the FBI. Sorry, I need a drink. That's kind of funny, but I'm not saying it. Um, anyway. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Thank you. Until tomorrow. So do I have this right? Rick says he was wearing the exact clothes seen in the Bridge Guy video, but he says he's not the killer. And also says he's dressed just like Bridge Guy, but he's not him. From what we've heard... Rick said he was wearing a black or blue Carhartt jacket, a head covering, a hoodie, and jeans. I don't think he's ever said, or we've never seen exactly what kind of uh, shoes he said he was wearing. Also, some people seem to make, I don't want to say the wrong assumption, but they say, well, Rick said he was there at the time of the killings, but that was only in the PCA saying he was there 1.30 to 3.30, but in October 2022, he told Liggett he was there noon to 1.30. So he was he's saying he was not there at the time of the killings. Previously, before I even saw the Franks memo, mentioned that earlier time frame, noon to 1.30. I said, how is Rick telling the truth that he was there 1.30 to 3.30? Witness 4 sees Bridge Guy on Platform 1, turns around, within two to three minutes, sees Abby and Libby headed towards the start of the bridge. There's no way... I mean, Rick said he was on platform one. If the 1.30 to 3.30 time frame is true, there's no way he did not see Abby and Libby. But it remains to be seen if he was there noon to 1.30 or 1.30 to 3.30 or 4. Hi, Malibu. Baldwin and Rosie are trying to safeguard their representation and pushing Gull by fast tracking the trial date. We'll see what um, McClelland and Gull have to say about this. I'm not sure 100% if the defense files it, if it 100% has to be granted as soon as possible. Kevin, even worse, if Rick is found innocent, has there ever been a murder case retried with another perpetrator convicted? Uh, I don't know. Luckily, I don't follow true crime a lot. Danielle, since the witnesses can't agree on what Bridge Guy was wearing, which that's correct, although at least one of them did pretty much describe what Bridge Guy was wearing, and it could also match what Rick was wearing. How can Rick have confessed to having worn it? Serious question. Well, we can see the video of Bridge Guy, and we know that he has like, I don't even know if it's boots, but it's not really like sneakers. We know it's like faded jeans. 
and like a dark blue jacket and something on his head. Who knows what that is? I don't know what to say, Danielle. <laughs> don't you have another client to go to? Miss North's musings. Rick confessed multiple times repeatedly with his mother and wife. I mean, that's why they didn't tell him about the Odin defense because he couldn't shut his mouth. Yeah, these um, various phone calls that Rick has made are going to be, I was gonna say interesting, but what else has he said on the phone that would either show he's either innocent or guilty, which obviously they're probably more showing that he's guilty if they're gonna be uh, presented at the trial. I don't know what he could have said at, on the phone to prove his innocence, that's what I'm saying. Cinder was confused. So, so am I. I don't know that I'm the person to help you gain clarity. So a group of girls said they saw someone resembling Rick, but it's unclear if it's the group of four that others saw or some mysterious group of three. A group of four girls around 130, they take this photo on bench two at 126. It seems like they hung around for a few more minutes and they start to leave towards Freedom Bridge. Around that time, around 130 to 135, a guy resembling the man on Libby's video passes the group of four girls. Only three of the girls were, in, uh, were included in the PCA against Rick because the one girl was uh, the younger sister and I guess she did not see uh, Bridge Guy enough to like give a proper statement. I've said before, the trail was so narrow in 2017 if they saw these four girls were starting to leave and they saw like a person walking towards them it just seems like polite that they would like make room for them to whoever bridge guy was to pass them so did the younger girl uh stand or walk behind the two taller girls in the front and so the younger sister did not see bridge guy at all really don't know Angie Panji, hello. I'll have to see more to believe he's guilty. I want to hear those confessions. The prosecution has lied so much in the last seven years. It's going to be interesting to finally hear all the witness testimony and uh, all the evidence or whatever evidence they have. Hi, Richard. No consideration of this request for speedy trial should be allowed until after the March 18th contempt hearing. This, in my opinion, is an attempt to weaken her power at that hearing. That's an interesting take. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, she does say, let's see what happens uh, March 18th. But it's gonna be interesting, like what's gonna happen on March 18th? Like when will she rule on what's ever presented there? And since the Supreme Court said she wrongly removed them, what is going to be her justification to remove them a second time? And then obviously it's going to go back to the Supreme Court. It's going to get pushed, like the trial is going to get pushed even further. It's just seems like one thing after another. And I just feel so bad for these family members. It's like they have the evidence or they don't. And it's just like, why can't this happen tomorrow, this trial? And all this other external nonsense stop <laughs> I'm not even saying that um yeah, I'm still here, everybody. If you're just not watching, I'm, I'm looking for a comment. Miss North's musings, it's not one confession. It's multiple confessions and it was on his iPad in his cell. There were, I mean, there's been various things. I think there's all this, also this issue, did Rick write like five to six letters to the Westville warden and 
were there incriminating statements in those letters also? Did he also confess to mental health or medical professionals? Did he do other phone calls after April 3rd um, that were also incriminating? In one of the prosecution's uh, filings, they said Rick confessed to both his wife and his mom. I don't know if it was one phone call where whatever, maybe Rick's wife was staying with his mom because she was not staying with at her, their home for a while. And maybe they were just talking to Rick on speakerphone, both the mom and the wife. So I don't know for sure if Rick made one phone call or if he called his wife, she hung up abruptly, according to the prosecution. Did he then call his mom and give a second confession? As a member of the jury, that would be very incriminating to me. Kevin says, all of our minds may be changed when more of the evidence is revealed during the trial. Can go either way. I totally agree with that. This person says, sometimes he's crazy and sometimes he isn't. Hmm. Yeah, some people, quite a few people have said, it seems like convenient that Rick um, has not had supposed mental issues because Gull said, if the defense keeps bringing up uh, Rick's mental state, that she is going to allow the prosecution access to Rick's mental health uh, records and medical records. Hi, USA Libertarian. Confessions without a signature and corroborating facts only the killer would know are very low value. Unless you need to pin it on one guy, then it is awesome. Well, as a member of the jury, I, I want to know from the defense, why is your client calling his wife and saying he killed Abby and Libby? I, I know that certain uh, medical professionals who watch my iconic live streams or my live chats have said, I'm kidding, have said like um, people who suffer from depression do have occasional delusional episodes. That's what one person said in a comment. But other people have said people like Rick is 50 at, at the time of this uh, confession. Apparently schizophrenia, which the defense said he had like schizophrenic delusions or whatever um, on April 3rd, that does not um, happen to a 50 year old man. Usually it's usually in their twenties where that would uh, become more uh, apparent that somebody's suffering from that. Also, somebody said uh, like these delusional hallucinations that people have in custody or in mental ho mental hospitals, they're not really somebody picking up the phone and calling their wife and saying, I'm guilty of this crime. It's more like crazy things that you have like dreams about, like a giraffe. Uh, I don't want to improvise anything funny, but whatever, like a crazy hallucination, not somebody saying I'm guilty of this crime that I'm charged with to their spouse. How far behind am I? An hour and 10 minutes behind. Oh my gosh. Let me skip it a little bunch. We're at two hours and eight minutes. I'm stopping at two and a half hours. No. <laughs> but thank you everybody for joining us always and sharing your opinions. Did that seem sincere? Uh-oh, what did I do now? Tom is just asking for Reddit to come after him. I don't care. Next. This case to me is about, as I said before, justice for Abby and Libby, finding out who Bridge Guy is and holding him accountable. I don't care about all these other random internet people and their drama. Hi, Sick Nisco. Sick Nisco wants to hear from the 357 driver who said they saw a muddy, bloody guy. Well, there's this whole drama about did that driver say he was bloody 
And she apparently said at some point he was wearing a beige or tan lighter colored coat, not a dark blue coat. But it also said in the PCA that she saw the uh, screen capture from Libby's video and said that was the man that she saw on the 300 North, I guess, going towards CPS. So how are all those things possible? Let's see what she has to say. This is actually um, not true. So I want to just like clarify this. Um, Miss North's musings. Are you Northwest Kardashian? I mean, he wanted to go to a more secure place. That's why he was at a prison. He requested it due to feeling unsafe in jail and the nature of his charges. That's not true. He had no say in the uh, where he was going. He didn't have. He did not even have an attorney when this decision was made. Tobe Lesenby, the iconic handlebar mustache guy, the sheriff of Carroll County, said that um, Carroll County only has, I think, five full-time jail personnel. So they felt like they could not protect Rick. Um, so that's why they asked for the Indiana Department of Corrections to find a more safe place for Rick. So I just want to clarify that Rick really did not have anything to do with saying, I want to go from a jail to a lonely cell in Westville. Hi, Jesse. I think we think it's not conclusive because we don't have all the evidence. And of course, the defense wants us to believe the evidence is weak. Rick is guilty. I don't know. I think we should all wait for everything at the trial, including what the defense has to say. Owl on the prowl. I want to hear exactly what witness four saw. I also want to see the original document that the uh, conservation officer took down from Rick's statement. I, I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut. Right, anyway. <laughs> It'll be interesting to find out exactly when Rick talked to the conservation officer. I, as I said before, I've heard a variety of things, and some of them are interesting that aren't really talked about. Hi, Larson family. Uh, you're replying to, I don't know where this comment is, sorry. Not if you're being tortured or threatened or coerced. There were cops wearing Odinus patches working at Westville. Who knows what goes on? Yeah, but the defense even admitted that the Odinus guards did not force Rick to call his wife to and say, I killed Abby and Libby. Hi, FP. This case will come back to Snapchat and the motel. I have no clue what motel you're referring to. What motel? <laughs> SP74, the best witness is Rick. His confessions, putting his own butt on platform one, never loaned his gun, etc. Yeah, it was, I would imagine that Liggett, knowing that witness four told him she saw bridge guy on platform one, and then October, of 2022, Rick says, oh yeah, I was on platform one. But he also said he was there only noon to 1.30. So I'm curious to know what Liggett thought when Rick said he was on platform one and also that he passed three girls around noon. If Liggett knew there was no other group of three girls at noon. Oh God, I'm not saying that one. Gang, gang, what people are missing is not that the Odinists are guilty of the murder itself, is that there were better suspects and there was a poor investigation done into those alternative suspects. It, doubt. Um, 
Well, if BH was at work at 245 and he checked out, he can't be bridge guy. If PW was home with his kids who are off of school from Delphi and he's like six foot four, he can't be bridge guy. So I don't know that I would say that there are better suspects than Rick. Who, if Rick was not bridge guy, who the heck is the man who entered from Freedom Bridge around 1.30? It ain't Ron Logan. So, I mean, I, I think there are things that match or add up to Rick being bridge guy. I just not, ha I just have not seen like enough to say 100% for sure. Wampo saw Delphi in the news for another predator luring those two teenage girls at Riley Park claiming to have weed. Um, I think that he did have weed, but still, I think it was like a 15 and 16 year old girl met a guy online. He was 24 years old. And they, I think they hung out, quote unquote, at Riley Park in Delphi and smoked marijuana or dubious people like me to say. Luckily, there's no like any kind of um, assault, but still these girls should not be meeting uh, people to smoke doobie. I think the guy said the girls told him they were over 18 or something. I have not really looked at that story. Just to be clear, there's like no murder or anything that happened. Hi, James. Why did they wait five years to charge Rick? Because um, fortunately, it seems like the unified command, like the top six or seven investigators did not even know that Rick said he was there 1.30 to 3.30. And there's this 2022 issue where Rick said he was there noon to 1.30. But on this 2017 tip that he talked to the conservation officer, it was written down that Rick was there 1.30 to 3.30. So, I mean, yeah, it's a good point. Like, how could they not do a follow-up interview on Rick after this tip was put into the FBI Orion system as the 74th tip? And just year after year, nobody went back to look at the first 100 tips to see if they missed anything. Um, 13 more minutes. Cinder says because his interview was never filed correctly, but the PCA shows that tip interview was um, entered as 000074 in the FBI Orion system. So I've tried contacting people from the FBI and most people ignore me, like family members, um, to find out like how this could have got, gone missing in the FBI Orion system, but nobody ever explains anything to me. So if you're an FBI person, let me know how this works. Malibu would like to understand how the Anthony Schatz profile fits in, if at all. Was well, a lot of people say, it seems odd yet scary that Libby was being catfished by Kagan and also separately, possibly totally separately, a murderer walked across the bridge and ended her life and Abby's. It doesn't seem like police have made a connection to Ke between Kagan and Rick or Kagan and the murders in general. All right, I'm like over an hour behind. Let me skip a bunch of them. Oh, wait, here's an Orion. Gang Gang says, Orion is not as complicated as it seems. It's also not clear when they started entering it into Orion. Yeah, I've said previously, so did the conservation officer write this like down on a piece of paper and he just put it in a bin in the uh, whatever command center 
it took a few days for them to set up the Orion system for this case. And once it was set up, they started going through this bin or whatever, a folder of all the like written down tips. So it might not have been like, it seems like it was the 74th entered into the system, but it's not sure exactly when it was taken because in one of my videos, didn't I say, does anybody remember what I said? Wasn't there one that was number 48 and it came in on the night of, this is 7 21 p.m. on February 16th. How do I remember this stuff? And I don't remember what I ate for lunch. So I don't know what that means. That means if the 40th tip was entered on February 16th at 7 21 p.m. and Rick's with this, did I say the, the 40th tip? And Rick's with the 74th, does that mean that Rick's uh, came forward after February 16th at night? I've heard a rumor uh, that um, what do I, <laughs> I don't want to say, sorry. It may have been a few days after the 16th that Rick talked to police. That's all I'll say. And I don't know anything. I only have outside sources as everybody knows. Yeah, this is a whole nother issue, Kevin. Uh -oh. Hold on, I'm trying to, why can't I highlight this? There we go. So DG is um, Derek German, Libby's dad, who we know called her at 311 and 314 as he approached and parked at the Mears parking lot. So Kevin writes, Libby's dad could have so easily crossed paths with Bridge Guy. So much bad luck in this case. Yes, I'm very interested to know if bridge guy or if rick is bridge guy how does he get from the crime scene to his car at cps around four o'clock i mean it seems impossible for him to i don't know how would he get to cps from the crime scene one thing is he walked like on hoosier harvard Ho hello hoosier heartland highway which i think at some point police said if you saw somebody on Hoosier Heartland Highway carrying a bag or something, please call us or if you saw a hitchhiker. So I guess that is possibly one route, but we know that the 3.57 PM witness says that she saw somebody matching bridge guy, I guess headed towards CPS. So how does he walk past three to four cars parked at the Mears parking lot? We know that people were in those cars at certain points and just hang out at the Mears parking lot. I guess, um, either arriving or leaving. And how does he walk past the Hoosier harvest store camera without not being captured on video, unless it only captures cars going a certain number of miles per hour. So, yeah, I don't understand how all those people did not see bridge guy too. All right, six more minutes and then we're all going, we're all, we're all excused, thank God. Um, let's wrap this up, let's see. <laughs> How, oh my gosh, I'm still so far behind, all right. We're wrapping this up, but I'm gonna like try and get to the more current comments. Sorry for everybody who I missed your comments. Hi, Big Fish, Small Pond. Why didn't anybody talk about this other Odinist? That guy sent me a message. I was nosy and I, I contacted him. He said that police have his bank statements and I think his phone data. And he's very upset with the defense for bringing his name up. Which it seems like all these Odinists who were mentioned in the Frank's memo were more angry at the defense for bringing their names up than they were scared that they would be arrested for being involved in this crime. It's raining again, in case you hear the background noise. I've joked in the past it's vodka, but it's actually water. I don't drink alcohol, though a lot of people say I should. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you. Um, gang, gang, let me sit up straight. That's a GMC Arcadia. Are you sure? Make a PowerPoint presentation. And I'll deny it, like Gull denies the defense. I'm just looking for a few more uh, comments before we wrap this up in four minutes. Uh, let's see, what have we not talked about? Hi, Anna. We know Bridge Guy had a gun. Yes, we do. That is enough to control more than one victim, especially young girls. Please, oh, sorry. Plus, we don't know if one girl was also manually controlled by her hair, neck, etc. Yeah, there's been some kind of talk about a yellow rope poss possibly being found at the crime scene. If you guys have seen some of my previous videos, you know, like the Bridge Guy video, I feel like there might be a white rope under like his neck area at the top of his jacket. Who knows what happened at the crime scene if Bridge Guy restrained at least one or two of the girls using some kind of rope. I don't know, but wh why would the killer leave a rope at the crime scene if it has any kind of evidence on it? He would have had to bring it from home and it could have had his DNA on it. So that's just a rumor that, uh, I think it was in the Frank's memo. Two more comments and then we're done. Gang, gang, you just changed it. It's a 2020 GMC Envoy. All right, I'll have to do some research later by saying, I'll ask, which is asking Siri questions. Um, all right, it's not important, sorry. <laughs> All right, two more comments and then we're done. Let me say here. People are talking about like, uh, the video was altered, the bridge guy video was altered. I don't wanna get into that, sorry. I'm hungry. Can you hear the rain? All right, sorry, this is boring. I'm just looking for some comments that we haven't talked about. I'm sorry that this is so awkward, but like my entire live chat is awkward. I'm just trying to find some comments here. All right, let me just pick anything, sorry. Hi, Heather. It's like Scott Peterson claiming innocence. Oh, really, Lacey and Connor just happened to turn up where you were fishing? Oh no, that's right. The burglars dumped her in the water where you were? I've not really looked uh, into that case a lot because I try to avoid true crime. But, so Scott Peterson is, I guess the Innocence Project or something is trying to take up his case it seemed odd to me that the bodies of his wife, excuse me, his wife and son did not show up in the, whatever, the San Francisco Bay or whatever for quite a few months. Like if they had been killed that day, wouldn't they have been washed ashore fairly soon? So that's one thing that makes me wonder if they truly were, if she, Lacey Peterson was kidnapped if she did see the neighbor's uh, house being robbed. Are people saying I have a tinfoil hat on or something? All right, we're, one more final comment. Thank you everybody for joining as always. I appreciate your thoughts. Hopefully you were nice to each other in the chat. Thank you to my moderators for babysitting adults. When is my next live chat? I'm doing an Oscars live chat, my first non-true crime live chat on Sunday at uh 3 45 p.m new york time i do this red carpet roast thing where i politely critique celebrity fashions for my making fun of the news video so if you have nothing better to do for three and a half hours and want to watch oscar red carpet arrivals as i try and think of jokes about celebrities 
that's my next live chat sunday march 10th delphi monday march 18th is this contempt hearing and rick's four upgraded charters so i'll probably do i might do a members only only live chat in the morning and then i'll do a public live chat maybe around this time on monday march 18th what is our final comment here hi cjk nice to see you uh my grandmother miriam it's okay if you are behind it's because there are a lot of good comments in here all right hopefully you guys uh had some interesting comments that i totally missed um <laughs> Final comment. All right, we'll, we'll do this one. Never trust a guy with a handlebar mustache. All right, thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a nice few weeks until I see you again. Who knows what's next with this case? Hopefully, justice. That's all I really care about, and hopefully you guys do, too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to the people who donated. I appreciate you. Thank you to my members, the moderators, and all you other people. Bye.